What is love? Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. You got a German in Louisville. Jonathan Masters, Johnny Tsunami. Uh, been uh, talking to you, humanity, the world, everybody, but I'm here in Louisville, so it makes me more fond and connected to Louisvillians. Um, yeah, so talking about love, Louisville. Love is revolutionary. God is love. Eight reasons to forget everything you've ever been told about love. Don't be picky. Plan dates to keep love alive. Don't try to change his annoying habits. Wrong. All wrong. These eye-opening, incredibly useful ideas stand conventional wisdom on its head. Eight reasons to forget everything you've ever been told about love from Oprah.com. It's good to be picky. Very picky. Single women the world over will thank God for these two researchers. In a study of speed daters, Paul W. Eastwick and Eli J. Finkel, Ph.D. of Northwestern University, found that people who selected a large number of candidates for follow-up meetings were less likely to be picked themselves for another round. So if they were not picky and they were accepting of everybody, then they were less likely to be chosen. People who chose only a few contenders were more successful in getting attention and responses. It turns out that singles who show interest in every partner they encounter may come off as not as eager and open, but as just plain desperate. What's interesting about that is it actually differs from platonic liking. So platonic love is love of somebody without any sexual feelings. I love you in a platonic way. Says Finkel, in non-romantic context, if I like everybody, then everybody likes me back. After all, who doesn't like the guy who likes everybody? But in a romantic context, if I say, yes, yeah, she's hot, and she's hot, and she's hot, and that other girl over there is hot too, now there's harsh statistical evidence that in general, the women I meet will not find me sexually desirable. So does this mean that grandmothers who warned single women not to be picky have been wrong? I don't think your grandma, that, I don't think your grandma meant you have to go on dates with everybody under every circumstance, says Finkel. But in a situation where there are a bunch of eligible men like a party, be selective. Finkel warns against interpreting this data as an invitation to sit home or play hard to get. What you want to do is to be easy for one person to get and hard for everyone else, <laughs> which will increase the likelihood of that one person's liking you. So you make it easy for one person to get a hold of you and then hard for everybody else. That's how, that's how you love somebody. That's how you increase of that person to love you in return. So... Love to be love, a love, love, a love being love, a love giving love. Love is just wonderful. Love is great. Love only means something if you act upon it. Love and knowledge don't mean jack shit unless you apply love and knowledge. Only practical application of love and knowledge is when love and knowledge has any meaning whatsoever. It's the journey, not the preparation. When you people look for a marriage partner, it's another topic Finkel has investigated. Basically, they think the sex is good, we love each other, we're good friends. He says, you'd go pretty far down the list before you'd go to, we'd get in sync effectively. But he's learned that the ability to coordinate day-to-day -day tasks like shopping, food, and running errands is a crucial component of a couple's happiness. To be able to coordinate day-to-day -day tasks like being able to shop and get food and run an errands, that's a crucial element crucial component of a couple's happiness. Married partners are co-managers, and as the marriage progresses, it involves more logistical organization, especially if kids come around. He says, and if you're not in sync with your partner, because you got to be in sync, you got to be effectively in sync with your partner. Research, you got to be dancing with your partner always, and always be knowing where they're going, what you're doing, how they're reacting, how it's all working out. So, it's a dance, loves a dance, and there's logistics involved too, right? If I if I love me a woman, say in Cairo or Giza, Egypt, I gotta figure out how to get myself from this chair here to the Louisville Airport, across the Atlantic, and then to Cairo. And then once I get to Cairo, I have to figure out how to get to some hotel. I guess I'd have to stay at some other place. I'm not sure if <laughs> that. If I could ask the family <laughs> to let me stay there, so I'd have to get a hotel. And then I'd have to, like, you know, plan some fun events to do. 
So these are all logistic things, and the logistic things, as insignificant and as boring as it is to actually be able to work it out, those are the important things. Where are you? Where can I get to you? How can I contact you? So the better uh, that two people can understand the logistics part of the relationship, the more in sync you are with your partner, you'll find if you're not in sync, uh, which your partner research suggests you find yourself depleted, exhausted, less effective, and if the problems are serious enough, it's difficult to imagine the relationship continuing to function effectively. To function effectively, a courtship all affords few opportunities to engage in the sort of naughty tactical tasks that fill a marriage. To test a relationship, Finkel suggests that you throw it in the challenge so that if there's a problem, you can develop a system. Expose it to stressful coordination experiences. Instead of watching TV together, or doing something comfortable, take a road trip. That requires a lot of collaboration. <laughs> All right, we're going on a road trip. Why? Because we're going to work on our, our logistics among our love. We need to work on this logistics part of the love. We got the spiritual part of love, but now we need to work on the organization and the logistical part of love. So um, we're going on a road trip. Put one person in charge of six things, the other in charge of six other things, and then ask yourselves, how well did we do on these things? Here's six responsibilities. Here's six responsibilities. Let's do this. Let's see how this works. Better to celebrate than commiserate. The way you respond to your partner's good news may be more important than how you react to his or her disappointments. So you got a job. You got a promotion. Oh, my God, I'm so excited for you. That is so wonderful. That is great. Uh, couples who celebrate each other's happy events like promotions or raises reported greater satisfaction in the relationship and were less likely to break up than those who offered support only during the rough times. Uh, lead, stu uh, lead study author Shelley L. Gable, Ph.D., an associate professor of psychology at UC Santa Barbara. She and her researchers videotaped 79 couples as they talked about negative and positive events in their lives and categorized the partner's responses in four ways. Active, destructive. Are you sure you can handle that job? Passive, destructive. Silence, then changing the subject. Passive, constructive, and absent-minded. That's nice. And the most helpful, active, constructive, I'm so proud of you. I know how important this was to you. I know that was important to you, and I'm glad that you, you were getting lots of pictures. Uh, everybody was dry, drawing your face. So you're an important piece of Egyptian royalty. You come from a long lineage of royalty. So good job, Egyptian Rose. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Be happy. Be content. I like what you're doing. I like your plans. I like your ideas. You're very wise. <laughs> so Jim Carrey on the Saturday Night Live. What is love? Where they're just shaking their head for 10 hours. 10 hours of what is love? I don't know when you're not there I give you my love but you don't care what is right what is wrong give me a sign what is love so um, Shelly L. Gable she and the researchers videotaped 79 couples as they talked about negative and positive events in their lives and they categorized the partners responses in four ways active destructive passive destructive Active constructive and passive constructive. The best one was active constructive. That's that's wonderful. I'm so very proud of you. Good job. Good job, princess. <laughs> Good job, queen. Good job, princess, queen. Love, perfecta, dolce, sweet. Princess love. I know how important this was to you. The finding that praise boosted the relationship more than a sympathetic response to bad news surprised Gable as did the results concerning passive support, like smiling vaguely, saying, great, and returning to your newspaper. <laughs> we assumed when we started this research that passive support would be good, not as good as active constructive, but certainly not bad, she says. But as time and time again, Gable saw, team saw that passive responses negatively affected the relationship's status or satisfaction. So any type of negative response, hey, I got a promotion. Oh, great. I'm going to go back to doing my thing. Oh, my God. <gasps> You got good news. Good news. That's best. Actually, that's the best part of the relationship. The, we're, the, the relationship is succeeding. If you're succeeding, I'm succeeding, then we're getting better. You just did something positive in your life. That makes my life better. That makes our lives better. That's great news. I'm proud of you. I 
adore you. I'll always love you. <laughs> always, that's my uh, uh, control variable. Always, I love you, adore you. I'm, gr I'm glad that you uh, uh, accomplished what you want to accomplish, especially since I've known that you worked so hard on it. You worked so hard to get this accomplishment. You worked so hard on it. I'm proud of you. Be happy. Smile. Be blessed. Be satisfied. Be free. Be free and happy and be in peace. Have safety, security, and love. All Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, um, so yeah, yeah, negative, uh, passive responses negatively affected the relationship status. So when your mate bursts through the door with good news, make an effort to notice these events and act on them in some way. So, hey, look at this good news. Oh, my God, that's great. That's great, says Gable. A partner can sense false enthusiasm, so if you're not able to give a genuine reaction, she suggests asking questions about why he's so happy. Oh, you're good. Um, why are you so happy? Why is this so huge? And it's like, well, because I had to do this, this, and this. And hearing them explain it will make you understand why it was such a huge accomplishment. Uh, and it also, you know, says they get to express themselves, and it's teaching you. So this will help them says because you're given positive feedback and it will help you because it gives you insight into what makes him click. She isn't saying couples need to celebrate every event with a five course dinner. Simple and sincere praise is enough. Simple and sincere praise is enough. Yes, that's wonderful. I'm glad that that happened. But a five course dinner, a uh, party, festivities, a little a gift. I told, <laughs> I told some good news to my good friend in the West End, Louisville, through Facebook. Um, I actually I told him that I was in love with this woman, and uh, when I told him that I was in love with her, he had he had this airplane where he was flying, like he could do it, like he could change his face to flying in the airplane, Dell webcam, and he used a Dell webcam to <laughs> uh, to say I'm flying high for you, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm soaring in the air for your happiness, and he had balloons. He was like ah congratulations, and there's balloons and like confetti coming down it's really cool it was a really cool thing to do and it did make me uh that was the only attention he gave me and i was kind of like, you know later on i was like man be happy for me and he was like i did i give you the balloons what more you want <laughs> yeah so but i guess overall i remember the balloons more and the fucking airplane man that's you can't you can't forget that when they're like oh i'm flying in the airplane <laughs> it was a good look arthur e lee it was arthur e lee I love Louisville, West End. So, um, um, that's friendship love, um, but it was talking about my love for my true love, my one and only Amag Ali out of Egypt. So, a partner can sense false enthusiasm. Um, so, uh, sincere and praises enough if it's, it's a thought that counts, but I'd never turn down a five course dinner. This is actually a really good article. 13 minutes. Might do this whole article. Um, it takes a strong woman to be needy. You'd think John Gottman, Ph.D., who founded the Gottman Institute, otherwise known as the Love Lab, with his wife Julie, wouldn't make dumb mistakes in his own relationship, but he always remembers the time he arranged his busy wife for neglecting him. <laughs> uh, I said, you're so emotionally unavailable every time... Everyone else comes first. What is wrong with you? And I found when I said that, she didn't want to spend time with me. He laughed. So I learned from the couples we studied to say, you know, I'm getting that lonely feeling again. I just need more of you in my day. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. No, that's exactly. I've, I was feeling that uh, she's a very my fiance. I guess I can say that. I guess that's allowed to say as long as, well, I don't know. They speak Arabic in Egypt. Maybe they might know English. So maybe I don't know. So my, my fiance, right? <laughs> my fiance. I was kind of feeling like she has a real busy life, and so like I'm just waiting by the laptop, looking for any and every um, experience that you know, like her liking my page or her saying hi, how are you, and just kind of interacting with me. So I'd wait forever just for that, and it was driving me lovesick. It was. It, was, it sucks to just kind of like hold on and don't know when they're going to come back to you. So um, I think like I said a bunch of stuff and I, it was a bunch of random stuff. And I think I got the main point that I was just needing some more attention. You know, I'm getting that lonely feeling again. I just need more of you in my day. And that's, that's all I really needed to have said. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm all golly. I was getting lone that lonely feeling again. I just needed you more in my day. So you took it more extreme than what I I meant for it to be. Um, yeah, you're my only one. You're my only princess. You're you're it. You're it. You're my woman. So whatever whatever that takes. Five twelve. So viva la revolution, Louisville. More about love coming up.